So the answer to the question that popped in your mind when you saw the, uh, the thumbnail is no, don't do that. That's stupid. In fact, doing that reminded me of a great little video that I'll link down below that has a segment like this. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. Yes, everything about that was bad. Let's talk about why. I got a message from somebody asking me, is it appropriate to put the fence on the left side of the saw blade on a shopsmith? And the answer is no. And let's explain some of the places that you do and you do not want to have the fence and the miter gauge in order for you to be safe while sawing on your shopsmith. Now, obviously, the shopsmith is unique uh, among table saws, at least modern table saws, in that the table tilts. Most modern table saws, the blade tilts. Uh, of course, your band saw, your scroll saw, other saws you might have around your shop might have a tilting table, but it is unusual for the table saw. And let me get rid of this for a moment, because this was just crazy talk all the way around. So if you find yourself in need of doing an angled rip, you're going to always place the fence on the right-hand side from the operator side, the right-hand side of the table. That way, you not only have gravity working in your favor, typically the piece that we're keeping is the piece that's going to go against the fence, but you also are not going to get yourself in that situation where the piece that you're keeping is going to be captured and probably launched across the room by having it between the blade and the fence. Um, there was a time that there was this hugely heated battle in the woodworking industry with which way should the blade tilt? Uh, Powermatic 66, they kind of set the standard by having the blade tilt towards the left, which gave you uh, the right-hand side of the table, which typically was larger, to, uh, to hold your stock. Delta argued the blade should tilt to the right, so the Delta Unisaw typically had a right-tilting blade. That battle went on for years until finally the woodworking industry, uh, DIYers, cabinet makers, everybody kind of chimed in and said, we want the blade to tilt to the left. And uh, with that, there was a change among most of the Delta table saws. So you'll find that now today, most of your table saws are going to la have a left hand tilt for that very reason. In most cases, you do have more table to the right. And in the case of a very large table saw with something like a 52 inch ripping capacity, for example. Maybe you have a Beesmeyer fence. Maybe you have the, the old uh, Delta Una fence. The, uh, the fence is gonna be going off to the right. Now, the next question comes into play with the shopsmith when we're tilting the table. Okay, fine, the piece I'm keeping is gonna stay against the fence. What about the piece up here? How do I control it and keep it from getting against the side of the blade? Well, the first thing you do is you make sure that you're using your upper saw guard. With my upper saw guard properly in place, I now have a riving knife that's going to help to keep the board from sliding against the blade. That said, the piece that I intend on keeping is usually the piece that's against the fence. But wait a second, what about ripping 45 degree uh, cleats to hang on your wall? I wanna keep both pieces. You're right, that becomes a bit of a challenge. Here's where you definitely are going to wanna to have a friend. A rear support table on the shopsmith is very helpful, but the piece that's on the left-hand side of the blade ultimately is going to want to slide down towards the blade. So I always, if I'm ripping long stock, regardless of whether the table's tilted or not, We'll have my wife or somebody else helping out, and their job is to support the stock as it's coming out of the saw, not to pull it, but to support it. And I'm going to push the stock right on through. Now, do I want this much blade exposed to cut a piece of three quarter inch stock? Again, heck no. <laughs> so in that case, I'm gonna make sure that I've got my table raised to the position that exposes the amount of blade that you would like to have exposed. So where is that gonna put us? Well, depending upon your blade and you know, the school of thought that you were raised with, um, I was raised with the school of thought that I want the, the gullet, the part that is, is in front of the tooth, I wanna have that above the stock. Uh, different people have different opinion, opinions, some want just a little bit of 
blade exposed above the stocks. I'm like having a lot of blade. You know, the one advantage of that is you get a very clean cut on the top. The disadvantage is you get some tear out on the bottom. Um, but I'm typically of the opinion that I, I want no more than the depth of that carbide or the height of the carbide sticking above the wood. So let's bring our fence up and let's make a cut here. And as always, we're going to do the five point safety check. Make sure everything is locked down. My table tilt was not locked. And I'm going to take my jewelry off if I can. Um, my, my watch, my ring come off, my cuff stays on. One could argue that. Not going to argue. So as you may have observed, uh, got a little bit more pinching than I would like, and so I added the first step of improvement, and that is an extended fence attached to my main fence, and this has also got a little bit of a shoulder to help support the stock so that our wood doesn't tip off at the end. Now we also have a little bit of a cup here, <laughs> so uh, we'll be careful with that. Here we go. So there you can see the cut that we're getting. Of course, they are a match for each other. So they would make a perfect cleat to hold a cabinet to a wall, for example. Now you may have noticed John Malecki making a big deal about making a compound cut. And if you're talking about cutting very large pieces of stock, of course, this isn't the right tool for that. But if you're making picture frames, you absolutely can do that here with the shopsmith. We're going to tilt our angle of our table and the angle of our miter gauge in a complementary angle. I didn't bother looking this up. I just, you know, I tilted them both. But you'll get an idea of uh, the procedure here. And typically what I'm doing with this is I'm going to make sure that my, my hold down is positioned properly so I can hold the stock with the pistol grip. Um, you can put sandpaper across the back of the miter gauge protractor to help keep anything from sliding. And if I have enough stock overhanging, I might hold on to the left-hand stock up here by the edge. What you wouldn't want to do is you wouldn't want to put your fingertip and your thumb down inside the miter slot. That's not safe. But this cut would go like this. I don't know what, uh, what angled frame we're building here. It uh, certainly isn't a 45 degree. <laughs> but you get the idea. You're, you're, going to, you're going to control the stock that's on the right-hand side with the miter gauge on the left-hand side with your hand. Now, if it's, if it's just a cutoff, then I'm going to let it go. I'm going to turn the machine off. Now, one concern that John brought up that didn't make its way to the video was, well, what happens if you're on this side of the machine and you experience a problem? Maybe that piece of wood is caught behind the blade. Maybe you're turning a bowl and the bowl is beginning to disintegrate. He didn't like the idea of having to pass the, the shrapnel, and I agree, which is why normally I use a neat little switch, and you can do something like this. Let me show it to you. For years, Shopsmith made two versions of this switch. One of them that didn't have a dial on the front and simply had a key for locking the switch, an on-off, and a place to plug in your power tool. So this cord 
which I forget the gauge of this, but it's a pretty large gauge. Um, this would plug into the wall. Your shopsmith would plug in here. And then I would have this mounted on this leg of my shopsmith. So that way, if I ran into any issues, I could just cut the power off from this end of the machine. This particular one with the variable speed rheostat, this was used on the, uh, the standalone scroll saw and on the professional planer. And it controlled this port right here, which was the feed on the planer and the, uh, the motor that was on the uh, scroll saw. Anyway, it doesn't have to be this switch. You can take any switch that has a short but, but high gauge cord, use it to give you that extension that you need over to your outlet, and then plug your shopsmith in here and mount this to this end. I really like the idea of using rare earth magnets here because then you can freely move the switch to either end. But what you wanna be careful of is it has to be secure enough that you, can, that you can turn the switch off. I hope that answers the questions you may have had about safely using the shopsmith with table tilting. Make it a great day.